What's up, YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the 2024 Kia K5 LXS. Huge thank you to Cole Dunn over at Safford Kia of Fredericksburg, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular K5 or any Kia product, I'll be sure to have Cole's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. It has been a beautiful day here in early January. However, in the past hour or so, the winds have picked up. So I do want to apologize in advance if there is any wind noise in today's video. But just like usual, first I'm going to talk about the exterior and the performance. Like I said, this is a 2024 Kia K5 LXS. And this particular one has been painted in the $445 Glacial White Pearl. I also wanted to preface this video by saying there have been no significant changes made to the K5 for the 2024 model year. Now, as standard with the LXS, you do get LED reflector headlights with high beam assist, as well as amber LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals. Now, taking a step to the left, I personally really like the way that the K5 looks. It looks sleek, it looks sporty, and I've driven a, another K5, it was the K5 GT, and I was blown away by how powerful that one was. This one is not quite as powerful, not quite as quick, but it is still plenty quick, and I was actually still surprised by how quick this one was here, being the base trim level. But at the center of your front hood is where you will find your satin chrome Kia badging. And then coming down just a little bit, you get that gray U-shaped style front grille. And this is what I'm referring to as the U-shape. It kind of looks like a bigger version of like a mesh grille. I just like the styling cue or the wording of saying the U-shape. And then coming down just a little bit, you get a satin black lower grille with a gloss black accent color trim piece, which runs across the bottom of that lower grille. And then you also get gloss black outer grills with some satin chrome accenting. Here's a view of that a little bit further away. And then this side as well, you can see that satin chrome accenting. And then you get a side marker light coming on down the side. And then one thing, I wish these wheels were a little bit bigger, a little bit better looking. However, this being the base model, you get these 16 inch gray painted wheels that are wrapped in 205 65 Kumo Solus TA31 plus all season tires. There's a view of the wheel face. Here is a view of the tread pattern on those tires. And then here is a front three quarter shot of the K5. That's what she looks like. Again, I think this is a very sharp looking sedan, even being the base model. Now coming on down the side, you do get body color mirror caps. And as standard, these side view mirrors are heated, manual folding, and you will find your blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver's side mirror and on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror, about right there. Now taking a step back, Here's what the side profile shot of the K5 looks like. You may notice at the top of your windows, you get that satin chrome window trim, but then you get the satin black window trim on the bottom of the windows. Then you get body color door handles with keyless access. Just keep in mind the keyless access function is only on your front two door handles. The rear two door handles do not get that keyless access function. And then on the driver's side, you have your filler neck. So you do have to have the vehicle be unlocked in order to access that, but all you would have to do is push against that. But again, you have to unlock the vehicle first and then you can have access into your fuel door. So that's very nice. Don't have to worry about anybody stealing your fuel because when you lock the vehicle, like I'm doing now, you no longer have access into the fuel door. So very good uh, little thing there. And then up top here, body color shark fan antenna. You get a rear window defroster. Your third brake light is located right up top there. Now coming around back, here's a rear three quarter shot of the K5. I kind of think like if this had the LED bar, which this does not get LED taillights, uh, but it kind of reminds me of like a Lincoln MKZ with the light bar going all the way across. But anyways, you can see, you get that satin chrome window trim, but that satin chrome window trim flows throughout here to the bottom or I guess this is below the bottom because the window ends here. Then you get some satin black trim and then you get that satin chrome trim that wraps around the bottom of this trim piece here. Like I mentioned, you do not get LED taillights with this thing. You get standard taillights and then you get this black trim piece on the outsides of your rear bumper. Here's a little booty shot 
of the K5. You can see you get the satin chrome badging with the Kia badging with the K5 badging. You get a backup camera beneath your K and then just to the right of that, if you press on that, that is to open up your trunk and your trunk will open up. And uh, this is where the only, I guess, two of the three options that this vehicle has on it. So first things first, this has the $175 carpeted floor mats, which are black and they get that K5 script there also in black. And then this also does have the $55 cargo net, which is what this is here. And then with the K5, you do get a compact spare tire, which is down underneath there, along with your jack. Um, so that is what that looks like down underneath there. I just did a video with a Kia Forte, uh, and that one did not come with a spare tire. It came with a tire inflator kit. And then also, these second row seats back here also do drop if you pull on that and you pull on that and then you push on them, they will drop for an additional about four feet of storage space. But considering the size of this sedan, you get a respectable size trunk when it comes to the height of the trunk and then when it comes to the length of the trunk, uh, I think this is a good size and um, you can fit what you need to back in here considering the size of this sedan. So nice size trunk and then let's finish things off here at the rear end. So you may notice that you do get a gloss black rear valence. You get two reflectors. You get a dual exhaust system. So you get faux exhaust tips actually. So the exhaust does not actually come out of there, but it kind of has the illusion that it does. And then you get this gloss black valence down here uh, with like that rear diffuser style. I'm not sure if that's gonna pick up on camera, but you can see those three fins there just to add to the sporty look of the K5 overall. I personally, like I said, really like the way that the K5 looks. I like the design of the K5. If it were me, I know that this is on the total other extreme of the K5 trim levels. I would really, I would actually personally get a K5 GT. That is how good that car was. It was super quick, it was comfortable, it was great overall, but this is a great value for what you get. It's very comfortable and it's still very quick. So with that in mind, now let's talk about performance. Popping open that hood reveals that 1.6 liter turbo four cylinder that makes 180 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. It is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 7.7 seconds. And if you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 27 miles per gallon in the city, 37 miles per gallon on the highway for 31 miles per gallon combined with front wheel drive. One thing I wanted to mention is that this thing was surprisingly quick. You know, when I first got this thing out on the road, I was taken back by how quick it was. And the same thing happened to me when I did the GT. Obviously when I you know, did a video with the GT, the GT was quite a bit quicker than this. But this is still plenty quick. It's got great low end torque and it still has great fuel economy as well. So I think it's a winner overall. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. I put a lot of time and effort into making these videos. So if you're enjoying the video, if you learned anything from the video, please just take a second to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section down below and hit that subscribe button. The likes and comments in particular look very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm and that is what helps me grow. So I'd appreciate it if you would do those three things, but only if you're enjoying the video. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, like I mentioned earlier in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, press on this button right here and it will unlock. You can press that very same button again and it will lock right back up. Now I wanna walk you through a couple of the functions on the key fob as well as what the key fob looks like. So primarily most of the key fob is satin black. Then you get some chrome accenting. Uh, then you obviously have your unlock and your lock functions. You have your trunk pop function, your panic function, but you do get remote start as standard which is very nice to see so all you have to do is lock it first press and hold on this button and it will fire up very quiet sounding engine and now let's see what the interior of the LXS has to offer so the only interior color option uh, is black so you can only get a black cloth interior so with that in mind let's start with the door panel this is what the door panel looks like. You do get a nicely padded armrest. You get a satin chrome door handle. You have your power side view mirror controls, your unlock and your lock functions. You get an automatic up and down driver window. None of the other windows are automatic up or down. Pressing on that button is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. You get a good amount of storage space down here, and then you also get a spot you could set a water bottle. 
Then you get a speaker, obviously, on your door panel. You get a satin black K5 door sill and a manually adjustable front driver's seat and a manually adjustable front passenger seat. But the seats themselves are very, very comfortable. So let's step into the interior and walk you throughout the rest of it, right? So closing that door there, let's fire this thing up and see what the rest of the interior on this has to offer. So I'm gonna roll that uh, knob back down so we don't get copyright strike. And now I'm just gonna move the vehicle this way so we have a better view of everything here without the sun interfering with it. So with that in mind, what we're gonna do is we're gonna park right here I'm going to walk you throughout all the different controls throughout the interior. By the way, take a look at that German Shepherd. That's a beautiful dog right there with the ball in its mouth. That's hilarious. But coming down to here, this is to brighten and or dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. This is to turn your lane keeping system on or off. This is to turn your traction control system on or off. And then that right there is going to pop open your trunk. Coming over to here, flipping this down, that gives you access into your manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel, so you can bring the steering wheel towards you. You can push the steering wheel away from you, and then the steering wheel also moves up and down. And once you find your comfortable position, all you gotta do is lock it right back into position, uh, right like that, and the steering wheel is locked into position. But now, let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like. And not only is this your turn signal control stock, this is also your headlight control stock. So right now, all the way up, that is headlights on. It also lets you know on that little productivity screen there as well. That is parking lights on. That is headlights automatic. And then all the way down is headlights off. I like to leave it in automatic because I think the vehicle does a good job at turning the lights on and off when need be. But zooming back out, this is what the steering wheel looks like. It is a vinyl wrapped steering wheel and like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen. That is what the horn sounds like on the K5. Now on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, this is to speak to the vehicle. Here are your volume controls. Here are your tuning controls. One thing that's interesting about the tuning controls on Kia and Hyundai products is that when you push up, it actually brings you back on a track and when you push down, it brings you forwards on a track. So it's kind of you know opposite of what you would think it would be. Uh, and then down here, that is to pick up on a phone call, that is to hang up on a phone call. And if I had my phone connected and I clicked on that, it would bring me into my phone screen uh, on the um, infotainment system. And then you have this mode button right here. And if you click on the mode button, it's gonna switch you between your different audio sources. Now coming to this side of the steering wheel, these controls, one, two, three, and four, are all to control your cruise control system. And then you see that page looking button and then that okay not, uh, like switch. These two controls are for your productivity screen located at the center of your gauge cluster. So now let's move into the gauge cluster. I guess I could show you, that is your windshield wiper control stock. Into the gauge cluster, you got your tachometer and your coolant temperature gauge on the left-hand side of the gauge cluster. And then on the right-hand side of the gauge cluster, you have your speedometer and your fuel gauge. But at the center, again, this is your productivity screen. So you can see your transmission status stuff. You can see your fuel range, the digital speedometer readout, the current temperature, and the odometer. Now to go throughout that screen, you can either click down, which will bring you into your tire pressure stuff. I'm all I'm doing is clicking down on this and it brings me into my tire pressure stuff. Or if I click this, it's gonna bring me into a different page so I can see my fuel economy stuff. And if I click down, it's gonna bring me into my accumulated information, my drive information, my drive mode, which right now is in normal mode. Uh, and then if I click this one more time, it's gonna bring me into my driver assistance stuff. You get two screens there. You can either see your attention level or your driver assistance stuff. Clicking this button one more time, you can go in between your different user settings, like your driver assistance stuff, light stuff, door stuff, sound stuff, convenience stuff, service interval, theme selection, other and reset. Personally, if this was my vehicle, I would leave it on the digital speedometer readout. That is the screen that I would personally want to have, but that is all personal preference. Now coming down here, you do have your push button start button. So you do get push button start as standard as well as keyless access. And then coming up to here as standard, you get an eight inch infotainment system with wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto connectivity. And this is what the screen looks like. Not very much, or not very many things you can do on this screen, but you have all of these physical controls like the radio, the media, seek, track, setup. These are all like um, basically shortcut buttons you into your radio stuff, shortcut button into your media stuff, or you can go forwards or backwards on a track. It can shortcut you into your setup screen, which is basically your different settings. So those are all of your different settings on that screen there. I'll show you the general settings. You can go between all of those different things. Go back, 
you can see your vehicle settings throughout here as well. You get your drive mode stuff or your climate stuff. Uh, and then obviously you have a volume control knob, you have a tuning control knob. And then if you click on that button with the little star, if you clicked on that, you can make that button whatever you want it to be, but you have to select one of these options here. So it can either be your Bluetooth audio stuff, your phone stuff, your phone projection stuff. It can turn the display on or off. It can bring you into your home screen or it can be nothing. If it was my vehicle, I'd probably put it on this home screen thing. Uh, but again, you can only choose one of these things, but one of these things can be what that button is, if that makes sense. And then coming down, yet two HVAC vents, you have your, oh, um, you have your uh, what's this called, hazard button. You get dual zone climate control as standard, that is automatic climate control. And I'll show you what the screen looks like when it is on. That is what it looks like. And then you have all of these controls for the climate control screen. You get two USB A ports down in there. You get a, U, or uh, excuse me, you get a 12 volt power outlet. Then you get a little bit of storage space down in here. You can set a phone, you can set a key fob, something like that. You get two cup holders. You have your gear shift selector here, which feels like a pistol grip. Um, so you go into drive and you flip it over to the left. Now, when I push up, that is going to upshift. And when I push down, that is, or pull down, that is going to downshift the transmission. Again, you do get the eight speed automatic transmission. And then you do get an electronic parking brake. Auto hold is a nice feature. Uh, let's say you're stuck in 95 traffic. If you press on that, the vehicle will hold you in place by itself with its braking system. It is a very convenient feature. And then you have your drive mode selector here. You get four drive modes. You have your smart mode, your normal mode, your sport mode, and your custom mode in which you can set up whatever you want custom mode to be. Uh, and then you get a little bit of storage space here. You can set your key fob here instead if you wanted to. And then you get quite a bit of storage space down in this console area. Uh, I would say it's probably, you know, 12 inches this way and about eight inches this way and probably you know about i don't know eight to ten inches of depth as well so very good amount of storage space down in the center console considering the size of this vehicle and then moving over to here you get your glove box you can see your owner's manual is in there but you still get a little bit of storage space here literally perfect for chipotle napkins or utensils or snacks or something like that so very good amount of space in the glove box again considering the size of the sedan then you just get a standard rear view mirror here. You get your automatic, or excuse me, your instant dome light on button there. And then that button right there is whether you want the lights to turn on or not when you open up the doors. The driver gets a no poop handle. The front passenger also gets a no poop handle. And then when it comes to the visors, when you open this thing up, you get a vanity mirror as well as a vanity light and a little clip you could set money, registration, or any small paper product like a business card. And then also, these visors slide forwards and backwards dependent on where the sun is shining which is very nice i just did a video with a kia forte um which is like the model below this and that vi the visors on that did not slide forwards and backwards and honestly i after doing a video with that and doing a video with this i know this is a little bit more money but uh i would get this it's just better in my opinion and then same thing with the visor on that side as well. But uh, now I'm just gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen. You can take a look at everything that you get as standard, the three options that this has, including the paint color and the two things that you get in the trunk, like the, the mats and the cargo net. Uh, and then a couple things that I figured you might wanna know that you get as standard without having to look at the window sticker. You get remote start, you get the blind spot monitoring, you get the lane keep assist, you get the rear cross traffic collision avoidance, as well as everything else you can read on screen by yourself. But basically I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP now. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 K5 LXS is spec is $27,190. Um, and I think that's a pretty good value. Yes, you can get more for your money um, with maybe a Forte, but this is bigger. It's more comfortable in the seat, even though personally for me, if it was me, I kind of like the seat in the Forte GT line. I just did a video with better. It was kind of like thinner. So if you were a thicker person and you were looking at the Forte GT line versus like a K5 and you weigh 200 plus pounds, you may want to look closer at a K5 than a Forte because the Forte GT line anyway, the seats were pretty thin. And for me, it works very well, but if you're bigger, it's not gonna work all that well. But I do wanna show you what we got going on in the rear seats before moving into the driving portion of the video. So, this is what the door panel looks like back here. Let's see how far these windows roll down. Windows roll nearly all the way down, but not quite. Then you get a nicely padded armrest, you can see. A little bit of storage space down in there, as well as a bottle holder and a speaker. 
this is what these rear seats look like. Again, they do fold flat. So if you needed to need a little bit extra storage space from the trunk into here, you can fold these second row seats down. But stepping on into what we got going on back here, we'll close that door. One thing, by the way, that I failed to mention in the front, the front also has the same thing. This makes it very easy to grab onto the um, door and close it when you need to, when you're coming into the vehicle. So I like that little like thing right there. Then up top here, you get a no poo panel, a spot you could set your dry cleaning. You get your halogen dome light back here. Same stuff on that side. You get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat. You get a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. You get two USB-A ports down in there. And you also get a center fold down armrest with two cup holders. And these seats in the rear are also very comfortable as well. They have like a very nice amount of padding on your lumbar area. Um, and it's just, it feels big. It feels spacious, which is a nice thing on an SUV like the, or excuse me, a sedan like this. I probably said SUV a couple times referring to this as an SUV. I do that quite often. I don't know why, but very, very comfortable here uh, in these second row seats. And when it comes to knee and leg room, I'm five foot nine and I am adjusted behind myself. Take a look at all that knee and leg room. Here's another view of that knee and leg room. And when it comes to headroom, I probably have an inch and a half to two inches of headroom left over. If I needed a little bit more, I could slouch down a little bit and find a little bit of extra headroom. But you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of this K5. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now onto the driving portion of the video. Take a listen. I gotta say, first things first, an automatic just makes this thing so much better than some of the other cars um, <clears throat> in this segment. I am a huge fan of automatics compared to CVTs. It seems like a lot of vehicles in this segment put a CVT um, in their cars. And it's, it just, it makes a huge difference to have an automatic transmission. It's just, it's so much better. I just got out of doing a video with a Kia Forte GT line that had an uh, intelligent variable transmission. It's a CVT. The automatic just makes such a big difference. It really, really does. It makes the vehicle feel quicker. Yes, this is a quicker vehicle overall, but I personally just like the sound of an automatic. You know, when it shifts gears and it goes through the ranges of the RPMs uh, and just the feeling, the way that it drives is just better in my opinion. Uh, and this eight speed auto is great. It's, I haven't experienced uh, anything that would make me say otherwise. And I'll do a nice little acceleration here, just a normal one. Um, once we get up and going again, I'll give the traffic a little bit of way to go, but just, just watch. It's just a great transmission. It's very smooth. It hasn't had any hiccups. Um, and you know, you can normally tell if a transmission is gonna have hiccups within the first 10 minutes of driving it. You know what I'm saying? And I've already driven this thing 10 plus minutes. I've done some videos, uh, I've done quite a few videos actually with um, you know, the new Silverados and the new F-150s and uh, Expeditions and the, uh, the Yukons and Tahos and all that kind of stuff with their 10 speed automatic transmission. And you can feel the joltiness of the 10 speeds in those. I know those are totally unrelated to this, but basically what I'm trying to say is, you can tell if a transmission is good uh, rather quickly. Uh, and this one is good. And I can feel that, um, you know, right off the bat pretty much. It's just, it's very responsive. It switches gears quickly. It's just very, it's a good transmission. You know what I'm saying? And I'll do a nice little uh, acceleration to the left here once I get going again. But these seats also very, very comfortable. And uh, once everybody gets going again, I'll give it a little bit of gas. Here you go. It's just a really quick little sedan. It really is truly quick uh, and actually like decently fun to drive. Like this guy's probably gonna get on it here and I'll get on it with him. It's just, it has really good get up. It really does. Um, and yes, you could absolutely get the GT and I think I stated it earlier in the video, the GT is plenty of fun to drive. It is super quick and it will blow the tires off 
from a stop but that one obviously costs quite a bit more money than this uh, and this thing's got more than enough get up it's got great fuel economy um, but moving on from power and fuel economy and all that kind of stuff actually maybe not I'll do another little acceleration here uh, if I can but I wanted to say that the seats in this are very very comfortable the ride is very very comfortable the sound system is pretty decent um, you know for the money it's about the sound system that you would expect you know what I'm saying it's not amazing it's not terrible um, it's pretty decent it's good enough uh, it's a little bit better than good enough but um, yeah I mean overall this is a very good vehicle for the money it's got everything that you need in a vehicle and a little bit of what you want in a vehicle but that's good right you know it doesn't have all the frills and the unnecessary things that you don't need on a vehicle but it's got everything that you need and just a little bit more which is definitely nice and it's a good vehicle for those who are looking for something that has good value it's a good value um, something that is comfortable something that is safe something that is rather quick and this is rather quick uh, and I think this also is just a good looking sedan as well the only thing that would take away from its looks are the 16 inch wheels those make it look not base model -y because they don't they're not like a steel cap but the wheels could be a little bit better but that's why they have the other trim levels for those who care about that kind of stuff but if you're looking for something of value and you just want something that's comfortable quick efficient you don't care about what the wheels look like and i don't think these are a bad looking wheel i think they're just a little bit small you know they're 16 inch wheel but a lot of you out there don't care but um, I'm actually very surprised to see that they have LED, uh, even if they're reflector, LED reflector headlights on this. I really like the way the daytime running lights look on this. And the front end on this thing is really sharp, you know? It's just got that sleek, sporty look to it. And I think it just looks great overall. It performs great. It's very comfortable. It's just a great vehicle overall. I mean, it truly, truly is. Um, I don't know, give you a little something here. That low end torque, all you gotta do is get on it just a little bit. And I'm telling you, the low end torque of this engine is great. Um, you know, there's really not that much going on with this thing. You know what I mean? It doesn't have like tons of different features. It doesn't have the heated seats. It doesn't have ventilated seats. It doesn't have a steering. Um, it has a steering wheel, obviously, but I was gonna say it doesn't have a sunroof, but that's okay. You know, people who are looking at getting this aren't looking for all those frills they're looking for something that's nice comfortable new efficient maybe not even quick maybe they don't care if it's quick or not but i can tell you and i can assure you that this is plenty quick you see that mattress on the top of that car hopefully that thing's strapped down properly um i always miss this turn but this time i'm actually going to get the turn i always go that way and then i end up having to take a right but uh this way saves me a little bit of time now when it comes to the suspension we're going over uh some bumps here and it soaks up the bumps very well so overall the suspension is comfortable the seats are comfortable it's just a great vehicle and it's a great value for what you get overall i mean it truly is uh, and if you're in the market for a sedan and you're looking to spend about twenty five thousand dollars on a vehicle i would put this on your list yes this is more than twenty five thousand dollars by a little bit but you may be able to talk them down i don't know uh it's all dependent on if you can or if you can't but uh i'm gonna get in this lane and i'm gonna do another or i'm gonna do a nice little acceleration once we get at this light and you can take a listen to it yourself okay maybe not <laughs> now here you go I would say it makes peak power probably between 2,000 to 5,000 RPM. It seems like it kind of falls flat uh, after about 5,000 RPM. That's something that I've just observed. Um, but between like two to 5,000 RPM, it feels very strong. And that's where you spend most of your time um, in the RPM range anyway. And honestly, down low, it also feels very good. So it's got the power, it's comfortable, it's efficient. It's got, like I said, everything that you need it just doesn't have all the additional frills that you don't necessarily need so overall i think it is a great vehicle i think it looks great 
Um, and if you're in the market for one, I highly suggest you go out and take a test drive in one. Um, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by how comfortable and how nice it is overall. But that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you enjoyed the video, if you learned anything from the video, please take a second give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section down below and hit that subscribe button. Like I said, um, I can't do this without your support. So all those likes and comments look very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm and that is what helps me grow. But again, that is it for today's video. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.